Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen. I wish you all a very good afternoon. And I have to say this is one of the few uh, events I've attended where post lunch there's this many people around. So whoever is doing this magic, good job. In fact, we should learn from you because in the National Assembly where I serve currently, half of us disappear after the first break, which is tea. So, so great going on that. Uh, before I launch into my uh, sort of formal, there is no presentation, I apologize for that. I've just flown in from two different places, so uh, I didn't have the time. I do have the knowledge which I hope to share with you today. Also, I'll try to keep my talk a little bit shorter than the time allotted to me, because if uh, there are questions in the audience, I'd like to be able to address them, because I'm coming from a policy perspective, what government is doing as opposed to what government should be doing. And since we're talking about trust and relationship building, I mean, that's the entire reason we're here today. Uh, before that, even before that, I'd like to welcome all our guests who've traveled, uh, in particularly from out of Pakistan, out of the city. Uh, it gives us immense pleasure to welcome you here. And in some sense, on behalf of the government of Pakistan, I can assure you that this is just the beginning. We welcome you and we love learning from those who have either grown better than us or grown differently than us. So welcome again to Pakistan. They do. But just because Farhad is a colleague and a male and he invites all of us to dance, it gives an image of camaraderie. But if a woman and a member of parliament says that, I can assure you it gives a very different impression. And that's where I start today. The difference in the way we perceive working women, non-working women, female members of society has led to gross economic inequalities globally, in particular this part of the world. And that is my topic for today, women's economic empowerment, as well as where the fourth industrial revolution is taking us. So we did this day before yesterday, out of all those laws, a couple of interesting laws, one about inheritance rights. We are an Islamic country. We believe that a daughter can inherit from her father, a wife can inherit from the husband, etc., etc. Yet we don't implement that. So the Quran is there, the Quran has not gone anywhere. Islam is the constitutional religion. So why is it that 72 years down the line we still haven't managed to give women their God-given rights? So these kind of legislations we passed nearly two days ago. If you look at the ESAS program, so the, everything we do, 50% is assigned to women, whether it's the loans, business loans, whether it's the educational loans. Everything we do, because we're 52% of the population, and if you tell 52% of the population that you don't matter because whatever reason, that's not a positive message to send out. So while we don't claim that the country is going to change overnight, as I said, it's 72 years of, of sort of reversal. Inshallah, things will go forward. But I guess every man in this room has to think in a different way because this will impact the future of your daughters, granddaughters, great-granddaughters. So I end there if there's any other question.